I'm Shir Yarkoni from the Volkswagen Data Lab in Munich, Germany, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about our quantum computing applications here at VW. So our role in the quantum team here is to evaluate different quantum computing architectures and the fields of quantum optimization, quantum machine learning, and quantum simulation, and develop and research algorithms that could use these quantum processors to help the VW core business. Uh, you've probably heard some of our work in the mobility sector where we've done a lot of traffic flow optimization, uh, but we're actually also working with other business units within VW, like the after sales team or marketing. And most recently, uh, we've been starting working on production and logistics optimization use cases and, um, in the, and try to implement them in the factories within VW. So first of all, uh, last year we partnered with D-Wave and had a, a pretty big showcase at the Web Summit conference in Lisbon, Portugal, where we built a navigation service that provided turn-by-turn -turn instructions for a fleet of buses traveling in Lisbon, where the conference was held, and shuttled people from the city center of Lisbon to the conference center. And what was interesting is that we actually optimized the individual turn-by-turn -turn routes of these of, of this fleet of buses with live access to a D-Wave quantum processor and live access to the data condition, to the traffic conditions of the roads at the moment. Uh, so the way we implemented this project was by building a custom quantum optimization service that we then hosted on AWS that was able to integrate between the Android applications that were running within the, the fleet of buses, the traffic, the, the data, the traffic data from the city of Lisbon and the quantum processors provided by D-Wave and provided one consolidated system to optimize the traffic flow of this fleet of buses in real time with a quantum processor. Our project was called the Quantum Shuttle and it ran for four days, which was the entire duration of the conference. And it was actually able to successfully navigate all the, the entire fleet with turn-by-turn -turn instructions relative to the live traffic conditions of the roads in the moment. Uh, and for us, we consider this to be the first real commercial application that depended on live access to a quantum processor. So after we built that system, we then started looking at what other possible use cases we could, uh, we could match between this service that we've built and applications that would actually help the business units at VW. So what we came up with is something called the binary paint shop problem, where if you have a uh, a random sequence of cars uh, that are passing through a paint shop that need to be painted in the factories, uh, what is the optimal coloring of those cars that are passing through the paint shop that actually minimizes the number of times you have to switch between the colors? This is actually a really important problem in, in real life in the factories because every time you switch between the colors, you, uh, it costs money and it creates wastes. So, um, they actually try to minimize this uh, color switching as much as possible when they paint these cars. And it turns out that there's an academic, an academic version of the problem where you have um, two cars in every, uh, two, two copies of every car in the sequence, and those two cars need to be colored two different colors, and the order is, uh, is not prede predefined. Uh, this is actually, a, even though it's a simple problem to set up, it's actually a really hard problem to both solve in practice and even approximate. So if we could solve this problem, we could really impact some of our uh, core business in the factories of VW. So I'm going to walk you through a, an illustrative example that's really simple. So in this case, we have exactly two cars of every type, uh, the A's, the B's, the C's, and the D's, and we're going to allocate one variable to represent that pair of cars. So one variable for the two A's, one for the two B's, one for the two C's, and one for the two D's. And now we're going to start constructing our Ising Hamiltonian, sweeping the sequence from left to right. So the first pair is AC, and those are two different cars, so we want them to be color the same. So we'll add a minus one uh, in the edge that connects those two nodes. The next pair is C and B, and those are also two different colors, so two different cars, so we want them to be color the same. The next pair is B and D, and again, those are two different colors, two different cars, so we want them to be colored the same. And the next pair in the sequence is again D and B, and because B has already appeared once in the sequence, we know that we need to color it the opposite color, so we add a plus one interaction. And then the remaining pairs are also again appearing for the first time, so it's uh, B and A uh, with a minus one, 
um, A and C with another minus one, and um, C and D with uh, with the last minus one. And this actually represents now the complete system where uh, the minimum of this Ising Hamiltonian will tell us which cars need to be colored which color first. Uh, so spin up would be uh, the first car is colored the first color first, and spin down would be uh, the first car in, of the pair is colored the second color first. So this is a really easy and academic version of the problem where you only have exactly two cars of every type and uh, a relatively short sequence like you can see here. But uh, in real life, things aren't always uh, that simple. And we don't just have one sequence of this card, but we have really a continuous sequence of thousands or tens of thousands of cars. And they're not always that nice and uh, nice and evenly spread, but we could have many different cars of these unique configurations and they could be permuted in any kind of order um, it, it, that, that appears in that sequence. So it turns out that we can actually implement a lot of the, a lot of the things that we learned from that academic problem and extend it so it would deal with this actual directly real, real world use case of what is called the multi-car paint shop problem, where you have many different cars um, and many different configurations and a subset of, of each one of those configurations needs to be colored a certain amount of times, one of two colors. And it actually turns out that in our factories in, in VW, we have exactly that version of the problem. We have a bunch of cars that come through the paint shop before they, they go on to be assembled and the bodies need to be painted um, what's called a filler color, which is kind of like a base code before the final, uh, the final coloring is, is applied. And the interesting thing is that there are only two colors of these, uh, of these filler colors. There's only white and black. So we have to then optimize the sequence of, of colors that we assign these cars um, and their, in their configurations without permuting the actual cars in the sequence to minimize the number of times we switch between white and black. And I'll give you a short demonstration of how that actually is solved in practice. So here's an example uh, that actually comes from one of our factories here in Germany of the multicolor, the multi-car paint shop problem. Um, in this sequence that's labeled original, you have 758 cars um, with hundreds of different configurations. So uh, we have probably around like 120 of the car A or 70 of the car B and a different amount of each of these subsets of cars needs to be colored either white or black. Uh, so if you look at the original sequence, we have 288 uh, color switches in this sequence, uh, which is an average of 2.6 cars per color switch. So what we could do is we could actually say uh, as an approximation or just as like a greedy method, we could say, Okay, well, let's uh, just start coloring all the cars white until we run out of cars that need to be colored white and then switch to black. And then once we run, run out of cars that need to be colored black, we'll switch back to white. And uh, if we, it turns out that if you actually just use this approach, it kind of works. Um, but, and you do get an improvement from basically like a factor of two. So from 288 color switches to 149 color switches. Um, which is you know, almost, almost a factor of two. Uh, but this greedy method is actually not that good compared to the global optimum of the problem. So now if I overwrite those results and I send this problem to the quantum processor, which is actually what's being done, this is using the exact same system that we used for the, for the Lisbon project. Um, this is now taking this data, constructing that multi-car multi uh, multi paint shop problem that I described before, Sending, creating it as a binary quadratic model, sending it to the quantum processor and getting the results back. And we can actually see that if we use our Ising Hamiltonian construction of the problem, we now only have 57 color switches in the entire sequence, which is like over a factor of five improvement over the original. Uh, so this, these are the kind of problems that we really hope to be able to leverage quantum computing for in practice and really impact the core business of VW moving forward. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this kind of demonstration. 
And uh, thanks again for to D-Wave and everybody listening to for hosting the conference and being interested. And uh, hopefully next year we'll see each other in person.